All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at lesson 11-1. We're closing in our year of uh, flipped classroom. And so we're going to end with looking at circles. And so today we're looking at parts of a circle. Um, and we are going to introduce some new vocabulary for you here. So what we're going to do is identify the segments and lines that are related to circles. Yes, these curved circles, we're going to talk about segments and lines. So let's see what that means. Obviously, we're going to introduce you to some vocabulary, like I said. So we have a chord, not a music chord. It's a segment whose endpoints are points on the circle. So it's a point that it's a segment that begins and ends on the circle. Okay, um, and we're gonna have different length chords. Um, so if you think of like um, the chords on a guitar going across the center of it, there's the circle in the middle. The chords go from top to bottom. There's different lengths going over that circle. That's what our chords are going to look like here. Um, a secant is a line. So notice we've switched from segment to line. So it's a line that just intersects the circle at two points. So we're going to cut through the circle um, and hit the circle at two points like the chord does, except it's not going to stop. It's a line, so it keeps going. And then we have tangent and point of tangency. They put, together, put those together in the same box. I've separated them here for you. And a tangent is a line that intersects a, a circle at exactly one point. So we're not going to go through the circle. We're actually going to be on the outside. We're actually going to look more like we're on the outside of the circle. And so the point of tangency is the point because it only intersects once. It's the point where a tangent line intersects a circle. So let's start taking a look at the diagrams there. So what do they want us to do here? They want us to start categorizing things. So let's take each of the following terms and categorize it as a point, a segment, or a line. So center, I'm going to get you guys started. A center is a point. The center of the circle is a point. Radius begins in the middle of the circle and goes to the edge of the circle. So because we can see the beginning and ending of that, that's going to be a segment. So we're going to put radius here. All right. You guys are now going to put diameter, chord, secant. So that's one, two, three, four, five new words in there. So you guys are going to finish up this follow-up and put those five words in one of these three categories. Use the definitions from um, the first page. So chord, secant, tangent, and point of tangency you should be great with. We'll see what you guys come up with for diameter. All right. So let's take a look at example one. We have to identify the special um, segments and lines. So when we look at that, they would like us to tell whether the line or segment is best described as a chord, a secant, a tangent, a diameter, or a radius. All right? So remember, uh, I guess we'll review those words. Um, diameter is a segment that goes from uh, whose endpoints are on the circle, but it goes through the center. And the center, uh, the radius of a circle has an endpoint at the center and goes to the edge of the circle. Um, so let's take a look at AD. We'll highlight AD. So if we find AD, AD goes from edge of the circle to edge of the circle, and it goes to the center. So we're going to say it's the diameter. Um, and the reason for that, we want to look at the, depth, the reasoning for that, because it contains the center. So diameter and radius have to be part of that center, and endpoints are on the circle. Okay. That's the best way to describe it. We could have called it a chord be simply because the endpoints are on the circle, but because it contains the center, it has the uh, more descriptive uh, definition such as diameter. So let's take a look at HB now. We've got HB. So once again, we go from edge to edge, but we're not going through that center. So that is how we describe a chord. And the reason being endpoints Two, 
actually erase that and give some space in points because there's two of them are on the circle. And then last but not least, we have EG. So we have EG. Notice EG is on the outside. It only has one point on the circle. And so that's how we recognize tangent. And because it intersects It intersects the circle at one point. All right, so we intersect the circle at one point, that's what makes it a tangent. All right, so your follow up here is an example one named the following parts. So you're going to go back to this diagram here, so if you look at the bottom of the previous page. And you're going to have to name the center of the circle. Well, if we look in the center of the circle, it's a point. And so it's going to be point C. You're then going to name the point of tangency. So since the point is one letter, you're going to name two radii. So plural for radius. So you're going to have the first radius and the second radius. Those are going to have segments. Um, and then three chords that intersect that. All right. I'm going to give you one of the radii. One of the radii would be A. C. A radius is a segment, so we see the center as one of the endpoints. So you need to name the other one. We need um, three chords. All right. Um, hopefully, you can name two of them already, um, but I'm going to name one that we haven't. And one chord that we haven't named is J to K. It's part of a line, but because J is a point on the circle, and K is a point in the circle, I can look at just the segment between those and call that one of my chords. So you guys need to name the point of tangency for me. You need to fill in this point, and then you're going to name two other chords. You should be able to look back at example one and figure that out, and then the other radius. All right. All right, so in each diagram, um, or draw each diagram described below. So this is our symbol for circle. So we're going to draw circle A, which means we draw a circle, and we label A in the middle. And it has diameters B, C, and D, E. Diameter means it has to go through the center and have endpoints on the circle. So B, C. And then I need to have another segment that goes through the center. and has endpoints on the circle. That's what makes it a diameter. All right. If we take a look at the next one, we're going to draw a circle F. So I'm going to draw a circle. Center F. I need a tangent. A tangent GH is only going to hit it at one point. So we're going to kind of be just along this outside and hit it at one point. It's a line, so put your arrows at the end. And you need to label points G and H on that line. We then need to name secant HJ. Well, we've got to share this point H that we just had, and we need to intersect the circle at two points. So we have H, and then we could put J anywhere. I'm actually going to put J on the circle, and it doesn't have to be on the circle um, to be a point on the secant. We just have to intersect the circle at two points. So we've got one point of intersection the other point of intersection there. We have one point of intersection here for our tangent. All right. Notice they're both lines, so I have the arrows at the end. And they, we know they're lines. They kind of help us because they give the description there with lines um, and arrows at the ends. All right. So this, um, now we're going to name special lines, points, and planes. So once again, we're naming things. We need to identify a chord, a secant, a tangent, a diameter, two radii the center and a point of tangency. So I need a chord. Um, a chord uh, for this is not going to go through the center because then it would be a diameter. So when I look here, AB goes from side to side but does not go through the center. So AB and put your segment over that is a chord. I need a tangent. Tangent has to be on the outside. So that's line GK or GF. You could use either name. Radius has to start at the center and go to the edge, and it says we're going to name two of them. So I start at the center, and I go to the edge. So 
So CD is one of them. I'm going to name a second one. So I'm going to start the center, and the only other direction I can go is to E. So CE. Um, it says to name the center, and so hopefully we've already found that. That's point C again. Secant is just a line that cuts through the circle. So I'm looking at the line that goes through the circle, has the arrows, so that's HJ. Put your arrow symbol above it. Diameter has to go through the center, but go from edge to edge. So edge to edge is DE. We name those endpoints that are on the circle. And then the point of tangency is the point that um, the tangent hits the circle at or intersects at, and that's point K. All right. So an example two is DE a chord or a diameter, and explain. I want you guys to determine that. Is DE, you need to find that I on the diagram, all right? So you have to find DE on the diagram, and I want you to tell me it's a chord or explain. So you're going to, ah, or chord or diameter and explain. So you're going to do now, and we will um, talk about in class. example, we have circles in coordinate geometry. Uh, when a circle lies in a coordinate plane, we can use coordinates to describe particular points. So when we talk about coordinates, we're going to be using x comma y. We're going to be using two points. Um, so we're going to name the coordinates of the center of each circle. So we have a small circle and we have a large circle. They tell us to start with the center of circle A is A, so we need to name this point. It hits the x-axis at 4. It hits the y-axis at 4, so the center is 4, 4. For circle B, the center hits the x-axis at 4, but it only hits the y-axis at 2, so it's the point 4, 2. Um, we want to know where the two circles intersect. Hopefully you've seen that. That's where the two circles are touching, which is this point. It's the x-axis at 4, and it doesn't go up at all on the y-axis, so it's the point 4, 0. We want to talk about tangent. Um, we need to find which axis intersects both circles. So when I looked here, I saw, okay, the y-axis is tangent to A, but it's not touching B. So Y cannot be my axis of tangency. If we look down here, though, the x-axis is intersecting, is touching both A and B. So we'd say the x-axis is tangent. And what point is it tangent at? Well, it's that one we just named, and it's 4, 0. And now we're going to measure the length of diameter, all right? We need to, to go through the center from side to side. It doesn't matter whether we go across or up or down. If we notice, this is 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. This is 1, two, three, four units long. So both of them are four units long. We want to look at the length of a radius of circle A. So we're going to go across. And if we look, we already had a radius drawn that we know is four units, but we can also check one, two, three, four. So the length of the radius of circle A is four units. All right? You have a checkpoint to do. You're going to identify a chord. A secant, tangent, you're going to um, do a diameter, a radius, you only need to do one, the center, and then the point of tangency. So you have those seven things to identify. You've got example two to look at. And then in example three, name the point of tangency of the y-axis. So I want to go back and look at that example three. We want to name a point of tangency on the y-axis. So I'm looking at the y-axis. Where does circle A hit it at? It intersects right there. And that, I know it's kind of hard, it's going to be hard to see here in the video. But if we look at where that's intersecting, if I go full screen, it's intersecting between 3 and 5, so that's the point 4. 
but it's zero on the x-axis, four on the y. So that's our point of tangency. All right? What you're going to do now, and then we will check in class. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day.